Smoked haddock. One of my favourite fish. Delicious. Highly sustainable. Packed with protein. Lightly smoked. But it's not a dye smoke. There's a big difference. So you haven't got that bright yellow tinge. So much better. Next, baby spinach. It's a spinach that's very young, full of zinc, great flavour. Little teaspoon of olive oil, knob of butter. That little touch of oil stops the butter from burning. It looks like a lot of spinach, but it's going to disintegrate almost by two thirds. When I'm cooking spinach in butter, I open up the top of my pepper mill so the pepper becomes almost like sort of cracked pepper, not so fine. Once your spinach has reduced down by two thirds, add in your cubes of smoked haddock. Tarragon. It's got that nice vinegary flavour. Quite tart. Pick off the little buds from the stalks. Keep all of these. I'm grateful when you're making a tarragon vinegar. Red wine vinegar, tarragon stalks in. Chop your tarragon into your creme fraiche. Little season. Now, grain mustard goes brilliantly well with haddock. Incredible. This mustardy, herby creme fraiche will work equally well partnered with grilled chicken. The haddock's starting to flake because it's smoked, lightly cured. It cooks so quickly. Your creme fraiche. Nice. Now, it's almost like the beginning of the perfect fish pie, but as opposed to putting pastry on top, the eggs are going to bake on top, so you've got this wonderful egg crust. Turn the gas off. Now, just crack your eggs around the outside. Just a little twist of pepper. Get the remainder of your creme fraiche and put a little dollop in between. That adds richness to the egg whites. Into the oven at 180 for 10 to 12 minutes. Whilst the haddock and eggs bake together, I can knock up a simple spring onion garnish. In professional kitchen chefs refuse to use the top of the spring onions, but I love that nice dark green flavour. It's less harsh than the white. The smell of baked mustard. You can't beat. That is beautiful. Spinach has almost melted in with a haddock. Now just sprinkle your spring onions. That gives it that really nice sharpness. Wow. My ultimate hearty breakfast, smoked haddock and spinach baked eggs. So packed with protein and iron, you'll be raring to dive into the day ahead. Roasted tomato soup. Beautiful vine tomatoes. The riper the tomatoes, the better the soup. Take the core out. Get your thumb and place it half a centimetre underneath the tip of your knife. Place it in and then just twist round. That's the only part of the tomato that we're not using. Red onion and garlic. Red onion because it's sweeter than a white onion. Slice your onions and your garlic. Nice and fine. Traditionally, you'd be making it in a pot. It's so much better to start it off on top of the stove, searing the tomatoes and the garlic. When it goes in the oven, you actually roast the tomatoes and they don't stew. And there's a big difference in flavour. Be quite generous with the olive oil. It makes the soup nice and glossy, shiny. Salt, pepper, and then a little teaspoon of cayenne. Just gives it that heat, but it's not as fierce as chilli. Take your tomatoes and just slice them in half. And then a little touch of sugar. That's going to help intensify the sweetness. A little sprinkle of aged balsamic vinegar. It gives that nice, dark, rich acidity to the soup. Into the oven, 20, 25 minutes, 180. To make my soup even more irresistible, I'm going to make a punchy sun-dried tomato pesto to drizzle over the top. Now, I'm making this in a pestle and mortar because you feel so much more in control and you're not depending on a blade that's whizzing around at 1,000 miles an hour. Next, in a dry pan, toast off some pine nuts. Toast them to the absolute max, and then in. The smell in there is incredible. Parmesan. Lightly grate that. And this is where it starts to become creamy. Extra virgin olive oil. Doesn't need salt because the parmesan's going to season it for you. And just take a couple of tablespoons of the oil that the sun-dried tomatoes were in. Really helps to make that stunning pesto. I can smell those roasted tomatoes. Want them out? Wow. Next, pour in a little vegetable stock or chicken stock so it sits halfway up the tomatoes. 
put your spoon through those tomatoes, they break up instantly. Bring that up to the boil, let it simmer for three or four minutes. I want to make it a little bit more creamy now. Cream in, give that a little stir. You can keep it rustic and get your masher in and you've got that nice, thick, rich, chunky tomato soup. Or get yourself a stick blender. Blitzing it like that, you deglaze the bottom of the pan and you get all those amazing flavours from the bottom. Mmm. That's delicious. To make my lunch extra hearty, I'm going to knock up a deliciously gutsy version of cheese on toast to go with my tomato soup. Welsh rabbit, an absolute classic. I'm going to make a roux. 50 grams of butter, three nice tablespoons of flour. And that's all a roux is, basically. Traditionally, you would use flour, butter and milk. But in Welsh rabbit, the milk is often cheekily substituted for a stiff slug of stout. It gives it that strong, gutsy flavour. I want it nice and thick. Make sure those lumps are out. A nice teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And then season it. A nice and spicy with Worcestershire sauce. Gives it that delicious, intriguing flavour. Now that smells amazing. Almost brings tears to your eyes. Beautiful. Now, Welsh rabbit wouldn't be a stunning Welsh rabbit without rich, mature cheese. So, and a great Montgomery cheddar. Goes well with the beer. And drop that in. Really important to put this in while the roux is still nice and hot because the cheese melts. Now, for the bread. I prefer a good rustic country loaf that will stand up to my hardcore topping. I want that nice crisp base to my Welsh rabbit. So toast it, both sides. Spread that beautiful, cheesy, beery, spicy mixture. Just great. Got a blister and bubble and gratinate. God. A little splash. Alien and Perry. And back under the grill for 90 seconds. In one delicious, creamy, roasted tomato soup. It's coming back to me all those days I had off school. I used to purposely lie about feeling ill just to get a bowl of my mother's tomato soup. How bad was that? But my God, it was worth it. Oh. Now, my Welsh rabbit. Mm. Look at those babies. That just takes cheese and toast to another level. Wow. Roasted creamy tomato soup with a sun-dried tomato pesto served with the most amazing, delicious Welsh rabbit. I feel like ringing sick. Beef and ale with mustard dumplings. And helping in the kitchen is my youngest, Tilly. Tilly! First things first, I'd like you to season the stew and steak. A nice spoon of flour. Mix? Mixed, yeah. Good girl. What's the flour going to do, Dad? The flour helps to brown the beef. A seasoned flour will also help to add flavour and thicken the stew. I feel a bit like marshmallows. You do feel a little bit marshmallow, don't they? Look at the size of the chunks of the beef. Yeah. I'm going to cut my carrots, literally. So it'd be similar. Similar size, that's right. Does that mean they'll cook equally? That's right. Now, these are little pearl onions. I'm going to put them in whole as well. Everything has to stay the same, otherwise it could burn. Oh, we've seen burn garlic before. <laughs> oh, Matilda. Shh, you promised you weren't going to mention that. What is that? Time. Time. And what are they? Bay leaves. Bay leaves, good girl. A tablespoon of oil in. The beef goes in first, OK? In. Now, it's a really nice colour. It's got a beautiful colour. In with the carrots. Thyme in. Good girl. Garlic. Pearl onions in. Ooh. Good. Give that a really good mix up. Mmm. Are stews easy to make, Daddy? Stews are very easy to make, providing at the beginning you give it a little bit of love. 
Now that's all beautifully browned. Mmm. That beer? That is beer. Mm. And that's going to deglaze the pan. Adding beer or stout helps to tenderise the beef and give it a hearty, delicious flavour. And that's the only way I want you to taste beer. In a stew. Yeah? Mm. I want you to add in a couple of teaspoons of tomato puree, please. In fact, three, please. Because it's so nice. And there's one final thing in there. Cover the stew and steak with the beef stock. Give that a little mix with Daddy, please. Wow, that's really nice. It's not even cooked yet. Do you keep all these vegetables in when you st um, serve it to people? Oh, yes. Is the garlic going to be burnt? No. Excuse me. Right. And we always put the lid with a little bit. Just a little bit so it can breathe. That's right. And not make the stew all watery. Into the oven at 150, please, Tills, for about two and a half hours. And now, you can focus on your homework. Fun. Time to knock up two delicious hearty potato classics in one. Twice baked bubble and squeak jacket potatoes. Start by baking large potatoes in a preheated oven at 180 degrees. Shred one third of your Savoy cabbage and saute in butter and add a dash of water until tender. After about half an hour, your potatoes should be crisp on the outside and cooked through in the middle. Slice them in half and scoop out the soft potato center. Then mash with a couple of knobs of butter, mix in the cabbage and season to taste. Spoon this mixture back into your potato shells and into the oven for a further 10 minutes or until the tops are nice and crispy and golden. Two delicious hearty potato classics in one. Twice baked bubble and squeak jacket potatoes. Right, homework done? Yep. Beef stew is stewing. Stewing. Let's get on with our delicious hearty pear tart. I've been looking forward to this. You and I, chef, are going to prep the pears. So if you peel, I'll top and tail into quarters. Pears go soft in the oven very, very quickly. So if we're going to put them on a tart, you'll need to leave them whole, half or in quarter. What's that in there? Ginger. Mm, that's right, that's stem ginger. So we're going to use stem ginger and fresh ginger. Next, add your stem ginger, a little of the stem ginger syrup... Good girl. ..and some brown sugar to your quartered pears. And then just grate some fresh ginger. Off you go. So it's a bit of a um, different one to grate this because it doesn't really come through like the cheese. No. We're going to make that a little bit zesty. And now we've got some lemon zest. Some lemon zest in there. Right, what I want you to do now is give that a nice little mix. Now, this is a sweet pastry. You can buy this stuff or you can make it. It's so easy to do. So give me your finger. That's my centre point. I want you to get the pears going round. Like that, in a really nice circle. It's difficult, isn't it? Because the pears keep on sliding all over the place. Yeah. We've got egg wash on the outside, and I'm going to show you a little trick. So you lift that up. So is the egg wash acting like a bit of a glue? That's right. Crimple this with our finger, and the pastry forms this nice little shelf, like a little money bag. Are you going to do anything with the spare pears? Oh, yeah. You start building that up, then, you see? We've got the fresh ginger. And those nice little bits of stem ginger. Let me go round my... With yeah. your glue. With my glue, just on top. Tilly's last job is to give our tart a good dusting of icing sugar. So that caramelises it and colours the pears beautifully. It's a bit right. like snow. Isn't it? Now, that glazes the pastry, so the pastry has this really nice shine on there as well. Finally, the lemon on top. And then put that there. 180, and in she goes. You smell the beef. It smells delish. Wow, it's even gone down a bit more, hasn't it? Look at that. I want you to just... I was hoping you'd ask. Just have a little taste. Mmm. Mm. How's that taste now? Mmm. <laughs> You're not allowed any more. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right. Dumpling time. Flour in, please. I'm using self-raising flour for a fluffy result. But if you like your dumplings hard, use plain flour. Next, the dumpling essential, suet. Ooh. That makes the dumplings nice and moist. Thank you. Followed by a generous dollop of grain mustard. 
Two yeah, fingers. Start rolling the fingers round. And I've got a touch of warm water here. Your fingers are now a nice little whisk. My fingers are getting tired. Right. Now put your hand in there. Now you should bring mm -hmm. all that dough together. I'll show you the best way to get that nice and clean. Sprinkle some flour on your hands. Rub them together. All that will come off. Nice. That's a good way. Isn't it? Now, we've got this wonderful dumpling mixture. How squidgy is that? Ooh. A little flour on your hands. OK. Roll these lengthways. And then I want you to roll them like that in your hand. Off you go. Smell that mustard in there? Huh? Smell? Ooh. Come on. I never trust you with something like that, should I? <laughs> Do you I'm beating it? it. Yes, please. No. <laughs> Silly. Gently. Let's go in at 12 o'clock. 1 o'clock. 12 in the centre. And put that back into the oven for 20 minutes to cook the dumplings. Now, if you open the door for Daddy, I'm going to take out that tart. Ooh, it smells so nice. Doesn't it? Our pear tart has had 35 minutes in the oven. Look at that, baby. That looks good. Mmm. Mmm. Would you like me to start dusting? Yes, please. Nice and gently all the way around. Good girl. Little taps. The others are going to love this. It looks a bit like a snowy cake. Doesn't it? Good job. Now, very carefully carry that to the table. How nice does that look? Delish. OK, I'll check on the dumplings. Now, Ooh, look. Excited. They've sort of doubled in size. Whoa, mm. definitely. A final sprinkle of chopped parsley, and our stew is ready for the table. I might have to have a quick taste before we go. Absolutely. Just to check. I mean, we do have to be sure. We have to be very sure. Mmm. Mmm. That is an amazing, hearty beef stew with dumplings. Right, the twice-baked loaded potatoes, and we are ready. This is my ultimate hearty dinner. A comforting rich beef stew with mustard dumplings and twice baked bubble and squeak jacket potatoes. And to make sure your sweet tooth is completely satisfied, a rich and zingy pear and ginger galette.